if uh, in broadcast industry there were two major changes which uh, which shifted everything one of them is uh, new distribution paths new methods of delivery and monetization of the content second one is even more important for us as a company and uh, it is that when we came into the, came to the industry there was a walled garden um, around the broadcast engineering and we were sort of outsiders because we came from the IT part uh, we delivered the software for the office and at the beginning we were not allowed in I would say and as the time goes uh, IT became important part of broadcast engineering and today you can't split IT and broadcast engineering and uh, what is important for us that it means that we are now inside that we came in with the IT and we now cooperate with the broadcast engineering and uh, cooperate with broadcast engineers in delivering the content uh, those 20 years ago uh, it was a great uh, idea to start developing uh, this broadcast management system even though uh, that time it was uh, as Michael said uh, kind of isolated from from the broadcast engineering but uh, we clearly recognized that there was a need to uh, to make order in the broadcasting uh, planning and and uh, all preparations and uh, as we had uh, a few genius uh, developers of, of the database systems uh, we could do it well, I, I don't think that uh, 2020 will be that different from now uh, while everybody is talking about changes and there are changes happening definitely uh, if there is a new trend now the first adop adopters of that trend will be in 2020 so I expect that uh, what will happen is that more and more broadcasters will embrace the new methods of delivery. It will become important on more and more markets. Uh, if we say that uh, nonlinear is important now, well, in 2005 uh, there were predictions that by 2010 there will be no linear television. And still there is linear television everywhere, and in most markets it's still uh, got more income than the old nonlinear methods combined. So. There will be a shift to nonlinear methods, to delivery of niche channels, and so on. There will be a shift uh, to IT equipment and commodity equipment, uh, which is much cheaper than professional equipment. And it, this trend will continue. But it's not a new trend, it's just continuation of what's, of what's happening now and what we have said that was most important in the past 20 years. And probably there will be a new staff and it will be first prototypes in 2020, sort of. So I don't see a different world in 2020. I believe that it will just continue to shift towards the new stuff, but it will be the same world still. Yeah, I would agree with that because I think that maybe the, the age of the viewers uh, will be higher by 2020. I mean, viewers who watch uh, linear TV or classic TV but um, we believe that uh, maybe even a linear TV distributed via uh, different networks, not only via satellite or, or um, terrestrial broadcasting, there will be, uh, they will be uh, kind of available and um, it will exist by 2020 that uh, unlike the pioneers of media asset management uh, from the beginning of this milla millennium uh, they started uh, to work with uh, media assets from let's say from the broadcast engineering point of view like post-production and so on and uh, we uh, took this opportunity from f again from the metadata point of view so so uh, we wanted to bring an order and and some, um, I would say, organized um, organized uh, approach, organized approach to uh, media asset management, bringing order in uh, metadata.